Welcome back to Plant Farm TV. Today we have with us Mason Bee expert and owner of Crown Bees, Dave Hunter. Good to see you, Dave. Well, thanks. Appreciate it. We're going to talk briefly about six requirements for Mason Bees. If you want to learn about Mason Bees and how to successfully raise them, go visit our website, crownbees.com, and you'll find a little bit of information inside there of how to do it, when to do it, and exactly why to do it. Okay. But the first step, Mason Bees need pollen. Bees in your yard in the springtime, we're looking for flowers that a mason bee can land on. So think composition, it's a, it's a dandelion. Well, we're going to go past that more to anything open, uh, fruit trees are wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, Perch we've got mahonia. All these flowers are open to allow the bee to collect the pollen on its stomach. Okay. Next, we're looking for something that the mason bee can fly in and put this pollen into. So think holes. We've got reeds cardboard tubes, or we've got wood trays of all different natures. Now, these are all holes that can be harvested in October. Okay. And we've got uh, drill blocks of wood, bamboo, or plastic straws. These aren't really good because pests can overtake them. So we want to be thinking through things that open up. Mud. As, as silly as this is, mud's very important. We're looking for mud that's very clayey versus silty. That the, Mason bee needs to find about the right type of mud to gather, pick up, and put inside the hole. What we recommend that you do is uh, take a shovel full of dirt out and then mound it next door to it so that the mason bee can choose uh, the moisture content in that hole or outside of the hole. Okay. Now all of these holes that you've got need to have something to keep them dry. So we're looking for houses. Uh, you've got wonderful shapes from raindrops to diamonds and, and triangles, something with a long overhang that keeps everything dry. Mm -hmm. um, probably one of the most important steps we need is harvesting. Deep in October, your mason bees have finished the metamorphosis and they've gone into a cocoon. And you want to separate the mason bees from their pests. And so mm -hmm. something that you can open up. For example, I'm going to open up a, um, a reed, just using a simple butter knife. But as I open this, I'm oh. able to see whole bunch of cocoons inside wow, of it. Yeah. Whether I'm using uh, easy tear straws, it's very simple. A pair of scissors, you're able to open up the tube to get your cocoons out. And lastly, there's wood trays. So this has been just loosely bound right now. But by taking away the strap, you're able to take the bees apart and look for the cocoons in the middle. Oh, cool. So this is all these are all things that uh, will help you harvest. Okay. And last, and probably most important, is um, being able to remember when to do what. Brown Bees has a program called Email. And it's just a simple little program that once a month we remind you what should you be doing. What, what are the bees doing? What should you be doing? What should be coming next? It's very simple. Okay. So, to kind of conclude, Mason Bees are a wonderful, very gentle bee. They're easy to raise and they're just wonderful pollinators of all spring fruits and flowers. So, there's just six requirements that you should be thinking through. Pollen, which is we're looking for an open flower. We're looking for holes that the bee can, you can go into, but you're trying to open up in the, in the fall. Mm -hmm. Mud, that's more clayey than silty. And remember to harvest in the fall. And lastly, sign up for bee. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and passion about Mason Bees, Dave. My pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you.